Good morning. It's good to see you all this morning. And what a beautiful day it is. Knowing the fact that we have once again been rescued from death. And to that, we are thankful for what God has done for us. And uh, we're going to show our thanks again to him by worshiping him in spirit and in truth on this day. So let's go ahead and do that. And um, as we get ready to go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, we thank you for giving us this opportunity to see another beautiful day. And awesome God, you are. We're so humbled to be in your presence. We thank you for your son, Jesus, who died on the cross for our sins. And we're able to have a chance for a home with you in the end. Uh, we thank you for all that you have given us, all that you have done for us, and all that you will do for us. And we just pray, Father, that we continue to give you your glory. And uh, we honor you and give you your praise. And we just pray that you be uh, with us as we fulfill our purpose and assignment that will be pleasing and acceptable in your sight. And times that we let you down, we ask that you please forgive us of the wrong that we have done. Um, we ask that you continue to bless us with the right spirit, that we're able to determine what is good and what is of evil, and that we're able to um, not allow you no know, worldly things to stop us from doing the things you've commanded us to do. Pray that you be with those who are less fortunate than we are, those who are sick, uh, those individuals um, who have not heard your word yet, that they will before it's too late. And Father, we also pray that you be with our fellow human beings who lives are on the front lines uh, in the medical field, uh, military, um, law enforcement. Now we ask that you be with those individuals who are helping those where natural disasters have taken place. And please be with them, God, and protect them, those that they are serving, and that everyone's made, able to make it home to their families and for those who have lost loved ones, that you would be with them during a time of bereavement. Pray, Father, that the words that will be shared um, will draw at least one person closer to you on this day. We love you and we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> Thank you guys for joining me this morning. If you can, please hit that share button and share God's word today. It just might save somebody's soul. So let's not take that for granted and let's do everything that we can to stay connected to, to the one who created us. And let's also bring awareness to our friends, uh, family members and neighbors of who God is and how important he is and that we need to not only share his word, but we need to live his word. So please do that. If you haven't um, seen some of the lessons that I've given, please go to Man to Man Let's Talk, the YouTube channel, and you can find uh, the lessons there um, if you are unable to see it on the news feed. So please do that, and um, everything will, will be all right. All right. So let's, let's have ourselves a good time. And there are the individuals who are still partaking of the Lord's Supper at home. Get this straight here. Um, so for those individuals who are partaking of the Lord's Supper at home, uh, let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23 through 30, making sure that we're not just taking cracker and juice just to take it, but we know why we are taking uh, the cracker and the juice. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 11 and verse 23, for I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, take eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Therefore, whoever eats this bread or drinks this cup in an un, uh, unworthy manner will be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For he who eats and drinks in an unworthy manner eats and drinks judgment to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this reason, many are weak and sick among you, and many sleep. Let's keep this in mind as we partake of the Lord's Supper this morning, and we do it in a way that will um, that will please God, okay? So now, we want to talk a little bit about what I would define as the five C's. You know, they have 
three C's, cool, calm, and collective. And I want to talk about um, the five C's that is a process for all of us and the decisions that we make. And the first C is to be called. The second one is to be convinced. The third one is to be converted. The fourth one is to be committed. And the last one, confidence. So we're going to talk a little bit about that. We're going to use a wonderful parable, wonderful story in the Bible, talking about Gideon this morning. And uh, in Judges chapter 6, we will be reading about uh, Gideon. So, you know, Gideon is kind of like the inspiration to all of us because many of us feel like we're not worthy to do whatever it is that we're called to do. Uh, but God showed differently when it came to Gideon. And he's also done that with many other individuals uh, in the Bible where these individuals were not just stereotypical superhero. <clears throat> and which means that God can use anybody, anywhere, anytime, any place, because that's how God operates. Now we've all been called without a doubt. At some point we've been called in our lives to do something. You know, whether parents are calling a child, supervisor calling their coworker, or even a husband calling a wife or vice versa. Each time our name has been called, most if not all the time, is for us to do something or something that we did, right? And the question is, have you been called? Uh -huh. Hopefully, by the end of this lesson, you'll be able to answer that question. So please, at this time, just open your mind and your spirit and let's take a journey into the book of Judges. You know, in Judges 6, 12 and 14, the angel of the Lord appeared to him and, and told him, talking about Gideon, the Lord is with you, you mighty man of valor or you valiant warrior. And Gideon said unto him, oh my Lord, if the Lord be with us, why then is all this befallen us? And where be all his miracles, which our fathers told us of, saying, did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? But now the Lord hath forsaken us into the hands of the Midianites. Just a little background history, probably about the first uh, seven, one through seven, one through eight, up until 12. Um, children of Israel for seven years have been um, taken over by uh, the Midianites and the children from the east um, where they came and they took their crops and everything that they had and they just <clears throat> they ran all over the children of Israel. Why? Because the children of Israel decided to turn their backs on God, build up idols and worship the idols rather than worship God. And it's the same God that brought them out of Egypt and they're complaining. You know, why is God allowing this to happen to us? Well, the question is, why did Israel turn their back on God? See, uh, they don't want to talk about that. You know, they want, so now they're hiding and ducking from the Midians, the Midianites, um, because every time they would grow crops, the Midianites would come and take them. <clears throat> and so they're in a position where they are running for their lives and God is the one who allowed it to happen, which is a message to us that, hey, man, if we turn our back on God, God is going to allow things happen to us that he don't want to happen to us. But to catch our attention, just like he did the children of Israel, that's what happens. And there's one thing that if we turn our back on God, it's another thing that we're not even acknowledging him. That's a whole different story. But this is God's children and they turn their back on God and God is disciplining his children by allowing these things to happen to him and many of us will say well why would God allow bad things happen to his his children well God is God and he do what he feels is right to catch our attention and to catch their attention and everybody God deals with differently and we have to understand that so our job is to do what we're supposed to do uh, spend less time questioning and more time serving. Now, Gideon, Gideon was a judge. He was in the Manasseh tribe. He was the least in his father's home. Uh, Joash was his father. And Gideon turned out to be a mighty warrior. 
and he was commanded to lead the Israelites over the Midianites. So, you know, one of the things and one of the C's that I failed to mention was conversation. Many times we need to have a conversation with the Lord. God wants to have a conversation with us. The question is, do we want to have a conversation with him? Not only you can answer that question. Be careful. God knows the truth now. Do you want to talk to him? Because he surely wants to talk to us. When God speaks, we need to listen. And many of us are missing out on opportunities because God is speaking to us. He is speaking to us. He is speaking uh, through others to speak to us. And we're so stuck on our own plan that we ain't trying to hear God. We're doing our own thing. And we're missing what he has in store for us. We have to recognize that we all have a purpose and an assignment to fulfill for the Lord. We all have a purpose and an assignment. If you didn't know, now you know. And many times we miss God's messages in life because we don't know we have a purpose and an assignment. So why, why would we think we do not have a responsibility to the Lord when we have a responsibility in everything else that we do on this earth? Think about it. We have to listen to the Lord and we need to continuously speak to our Heavenly Father as often as possible. You know, the Bible says, pray without ceasing, 1 Thessalonians 5, 17. We don't want to miss the opportunity and not speak to the Lord. We allow things like work, our families, taking care of the kids, marriages, friendships, uh, got to go grocery shopping, planning for trips, paying your taxes, taking care of your health, eat, drink, bathe, and clothe, or even taking care of your vehicles or your homes as responsibilities to overshadow our responsibility for God. We all have a responsibility to fulfill. We all have an assignment to fulfill. And in everything we do on this earth, there is some responsibility along as accountability. And so Gideon had a conversation with the angel of the Lord. Then Gideon was called. The angel of the Lord spoke to Gideon as they had a conversation. And, and what the angel of the Lord did, he empowered Gideon. He reassured him that everything was okay, don't be fearful. But he said, he called him a mighty warrior and he brought the message in reference to what he was purposed to do. The angel of the Lord listened to the concern of Gideon and, and Gideon asked, you know, where is the God who brought us out of Egypt? Why is he allowing these things to happen to us? And the angel of the Lord listened to him. But then the angel of the Lord went directly to what he was instructed to do and tell Gideon what needed to be done. The angel of the Lord told Gideon what to do and what will happen. The angel of the Lord said, go in this thy might and thou shalt save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Have I not sent thee? So the angel of the Lord was saying, go and save Israel. And pretty much predicting the victory. So the angel of the Lord spoke the victory in existence. Now, if you didn't know, God is not a liar by far. And if he sent an angel down to give a message, you better believe that when we do what we're supposed to do, whatever will come, will come. But we have to do what we're supposed to do. Gideon was called. He had a conversation. He was called. He listened to the angel of the Lord. Now, there's still more steps to take place and to see if Gideon is going to follow the instructions from the angel of the Lord. You know, in the book of Jonah, uh, the same thing happened with Jonah. Jonah was called to go into Nineveh and to teach the word in the Nineveh, but those people were so violent and, and Jonah was very fearful, um, which the Bible says God does not give us a spirit of fear. Jonah went the opposite direction. So everything stopped at the conversation and the calling. Jonah was not convinced. So he went the opposite direction. But God redirected Jonah, spoke to him while he was in the belly of the fish. And then he went into Nineveh and taught the word. So if God tells us 
that we're able to do something, if he equips us to be able to do something, God will not let us down. He knows what we're capable of because he created us and he put whatever that's in us to be able to fulfill it, to be able to do it, to get it done. And so our experience while we're here is greater than just building a career. No, we're trying to spend eternity in the kingdom with God forever. We're representing him to the fullest. And we saw what happened when Jonah disobeyed the calling and he was redirected. It wasn't the most comfortable way. The same thing happened to us today. Now we will be redirected to where God wants us to be. Well, how does he redirect us? The same stuff keeps showing up until we get it right. Until we're able to get over that challenge that he puts in front of us, it's going to keep showing up. And it's more likely going to get harder and harder because we keep on resisting and resisting. So Gideon was called. He had a conversation with the angel of the Lord. And the angel of the Lord reassured him that it's going to be okay. You're going to win this victory. God tells us the same thing because he says that we are more than conquerors. So Gideon is wondering after this conversation with the angel of the Lord, is this really happening? I mean, you and I, we are sold truth and lies on a daily basis. And we have to be able to discern which is true and which is false. It comes by way of the radio, TV, family, and friends, social media, you know, the workplace, you name it. We are bombarded by truth and lies every day. When are we discerning it? Are we just going along to get along? It is our responsibility to have a spirit of discernment to tell what is true and what is false. It is human nature for us to commit to doing something if we have not first been convinced. So we hear about whatever it is, you know, it could be a place, this is vacation time, so a place to go on vacation. Well, we have to be convinced. There are details. Where is it located? Where is, uh, how much does it cost? Um, how far is it going to travel? Um, what are the amenities? And there are a lot of questions that we ask before we decide to go. We have to be convinced. And we have to take those things into consideration as well. Same thing for Gideon. Gideon had to be convinced that this was the angel of the Lord speaking. So in verse 15 of Judges chapter 6, Gideon needed to be convinced. So not seeing himself as worthy or the right guy to feel assignment that the angel of the Lord presented to him, you know, there was some, there was some questions that took place. All right. Gideon needed to see something. Uh, he felt like since his family was poor, uh, the Manasseh tribe, uh, he was the least in his father's home, which who would pick Gideon to lead the children of Israel, right? Well, the Lord said in verse 16, I will be with you and thou shalt smite the Midianites as one man. But Gideon wanted a sign. And many of us want a sign today. The thing is, is that even when we get a sign, we're still not convinced. But it's different for Gideon. And God showed Gideon what Gideon asked for. So after talking to the angel of the Lord, he asked for a sign. And eventually that took place. But some of us were like Gideon. We were not too confident about who we are. It could be the way that we look, what our size is physically, how we sound when we talk. Some of us feel that we're not even worthy to be able to do the things that we see other people doing, which leads us to having low self-esteem and our confidence is low. And then we feel like that we're not like other people who are stronger in their faith, in their walk in life, in their walk with God. We compare ourselves to other people and we just continuously knock ourselves down when God doesn't even do that. 
when God has given us all the ability to do all things through Christ who strengthens us, Philippians 4, 13. But Gideon, Gideon wanted a sign. And many of us have asked for a sign as well. The question is, when you got the sign, were you convinced to be able to move to the next level of being converted? In Judges 6, 17 through 22, Gideon brought uh, meat. He brought broth and an unleavened bread uh, like a sacrifice, put it on um, the stone, and it was consumed by fire when the angel of the Lord touched it with his staff. And Gideon was blown away. The angel of the Lord left from that moment. So you can imagine that once he saw that, um, how he was just taken. And many of us, you know, God is going to show what he wants us to show. And he deals with us on an individual basis. Everybody want to have that same experience that Gideon had. Uh, the meat, the unleavened bread, and the broth. And then the fire consuming it right then and there. But what signs are you looking for from the Lord today to show that he is who he say he is? Don't you know that we've been rescued from death? this morning? Is that not good enough a sign for you? Don't you know that God provides all of our needs? Philippians 4 19 talks about that. Is that not enough of a sign for you to be convinced? Don't you know he has created all of us with software in the inside of us to overcome any challenges in our lives? Is that not enough of a sign for you? When we obey his word, when we download and upload every day, we have the opportunity to do that. Is that not enough sign for you? The fact that he's brought you through so many things, is that not enough of a sign for you to believe the God that has created us? What more do we need to be convinced that God will never leave us nor forsake us? Remember, God will always show us what he wants us to see, not what we want to see. So again, Gideon, show me a sign. So he was instructed by the Lord to tear down the altars of, of Baal. And this is what the children of Israel were worshiping during this time. And many of us, we have our own idols that we're worshiping. It could be money, it could be our job, it could be clothes, it could be our homes. Anything other than God that we're worshiping is an idol. And the thing about us is that we spend time in the things that we value the most. And so those are the things that are idol are idols to us. And the question is, who are you worshiping or what are you worshiping? If it's not God, then we're in the wrong position. We are completely out of order. So Gideon was instructed to tear down the altar of Baal and to build an altar to the Lord. Mission accomplished. So the people that has been terrorizing the children of Israel the whole time, the Midianites, the Amalekites, and the children of the East didn't like it. And they wanted Gideon to be killed. Um, and so they asked questions and they found out that Gideon was the one who did it. And Joash, Gideon's father, um, defended his son and said, let Baal defend himself, right? And so as this was going about, that the Midianites, the Amalekites, and the children of the East, um, they went in a direction to get ready uh, for what was to come. And um, there was an opportunity for Gideon to do what the Lord had called him to do. And Gideon still needed to be convinced to be able to fulfill what God had told him to do. And so in, um, Gideon, as he was still looking for a sign, you know, God is with him. And he asked God to allow the dew on the fleece. He would put a fleece, a wool, a fleece wool on the ground. And he, and he asked God, you know, if you're a God, um, allow this fleece, fleece to be wet and the ground around it to be dry. Sure enough, next morning, the fleece was wet, wet enough to where you can wring it out into a bucket. The ground around it was dry. And then in verse 38 and 39 of Judges chapter 6, he asked the opposite. Let the ground be wet and let the fleece be dry. Sure enough, it took place. 
Gideon was convinced. Since he was convinced of what took place, uh, then he went to the next level and he was converted. Many of us are convinced, but we're too scared to change. To take the next step that God wants us to, we have to be converted. And the, the word converted means it's to change. Naturally, we experience a lot of conversion or change in our lives. We experience being a child to an adult, we change. We change good habits to bad habits and vice versa, we change. And many of us have changed workplaces. So we're very familiar with change. Although change is uncomfortable sometimes, it's part of our human development. And Gideon was converted, which means that this weakling um, that he once saw himself as, he was now converted to being that mighty warrior that God called him to be. So Gideon rounded up the troops from Manasseh and Asher, Zebulon and Naphtali. He sent messages to all of them to round them up because they was about to go and take the Midianites, okay? Um, so Gideon again, here it is, the one, you know, when the angel of the Lord saw him, he was threshing wheat um, in the wine press area he was hiding because as he was threshing the wheat, he didn't want the Midianites to see it and still hit the, the wheat that he was threshing for the family. So this individual who was had low self-esteem, probably not confident in himself, uh, very fearful, then all changed. And it changed from doubt to deliverance and from fearful to being faithful. We all will be converted to something or someone. The question is, will it be God or will it be Satan? It's only one of the two sources. In our conversation, we will eventually make a commitment to one of those two sources. And again, which one will it be? Will it be God or will it be Satan? Gideon was committed to the plan. So not only was he converted, he changed from being a weakling to a mighty warrior. He was committed to the plan. And in chapter 7, this is where the fun begins. And this is what we all experience when it's game time. God said Gideon had too many people when he rounded up the troop from Manasseh, um, Naphtali, Zebulon, uh, those, those areas. He had 32,000 soldiers. But God said Gideon had too many people. He wanted to make sure that God was in the midst of this victory. And if they had that many people going into war, and then the children of Israel would probably be, no, they would be beside themselves and saying, this is what we did, not God. This is what we did. So God started to minimize the army. So 22,000 of the 32,000 were afraid to turn back and to go home in verse 3. 22,000 of them went home. So they left 10,000 remaining. So God said in verse four of Judges chapter seven, still too many, bring them down to the water and those who drink like a dog, send them home. And those who drink with their hands to their mouth, keep them. And the 300, there were 300 who drunk the water with their hands in verses five and six. God kept, uh, Gideon kept them by the instructions of God. Now, Gideon, was ready for war. Family, and I'm here to tell you that, again, there was a conversation that took place between Gideon and the angel of the Lord. Then the angel of the Lord called Gideon to take care of the responsibility and leading the Israelites over the Midianites. Once Gideon saw a few signs from the Lord, he was convinced. Not only was he convinced, but he was converted to be able to do what the Lord has commanded him to do, then he was committed. And in our commitment to the Lord, you have to understand not everybody is equipped. Not everybody is committed to run with you. So God will eliminate some people in our lives just so his will will be done. Now, not everyone that is with you um, is going to be there. Um, but you best believe in situations that we've all have experienced, whether it's finances, relationships, employment, or health, 
there are people because God put those people in our lives. And the question is, are we answering the calling that God is calling us to be able to overcome the challenge? Look, every challenge is not going to look like Gideon's challenge and the things that we go through, but it's going to be a challenge. And God has equipped us all when we answer the call. Many times we look to family members and friends to help, but sometimes they are not equipped to help. They may not be God's choice for us. And God picks our help just like he did for Gideon. God will eliminate people in your life and we will add people in our lives just so his will will be done. This is all so he will get the glory that he deserves. So don't get too discouraged when family and friends are not there to help all the time. Just know that God has already picked your support team. Also know that your true family is the ones who are doing the will of the Lord. And that's in Matthew chapter 12, verses 46 to 50. Many times we can get caught up in bloodline family, but not everybody in our blood is doing the will of the Lord. Read Matthew 12, 46 through 50, and you see what Jesus said about his own family. That's real. So make sure you stay focused. Keep your eyes on the Lord and the ones that God put around you, and you will be right where God already know that you're going to be when we're obedient to him. Have you been called? Have you been called like Gideon was called? Gideon was called. He was convinced. He was committed. He was converted. Now, when we are committed, we see the value in the Lord and what he has to say and everything he has to say because he showed us the sign. He's always been there with us. Now it's time to go to work. So when things happen to us, we're looking to him first and not to our family members or friends. So God spoke to Gideon in chapter 7, verses 9 through 10. God gave Gideon options. He told Gideon to go down to the Midian camp and take it. He reassured him that he will defeat the Midians. Now, if he didn't want to go at that particular time, the other option was take Pura with him and listen to their conversation, listen to the soldiers' conversations. And that's what Gideon did. Gideon went down to Pura with him, listened to the conversations of the soldiers, and he heard the soldiers' dream and discussion in verse 13 and 14, and God has given the Midians to Gideon, right? That's what the soldiers said in the dream. So read that, and you'll hear the story about the uh, barley loaf rolling over the tent, the tent uh, falling over the barley loaf, which is symbolic of uh, Gideon overtaken the Midianites. Listen, when you are called, convinced, converted, and committed to the Lord, he will reveal things to you that will help you live in your purpose and fulfill your assignment. What is for you is for you, and no man or woman can take what God has given you. And so where the way Gideon was set up, he had 300 soldiers, and that was enough for God for them to strategically take the Midianites. Gideon was confident, right? That's another C. That is a bonus seat. Gideon was confident enough to lead the 300 soldiers from Judges chapter 7, verses 18 through 25. Gideon gave instructions. Now, here it is, this little weakling turned into a mighty warrior. You started giving instructions now on what to do with the 300 that he had. So he divided the soldiers, you know, directed them in the areas where it's needed. He gave instructions in verse 18 that when he blew his trumpet and sounded it, and they surrounded the camp. They say, the sword of the Lord and of Gideon. That's what they was going to say. So that's what he did. When the time was right, the trumpets blew. Pitchers were broken with their hands. Chaos took place in the Midian camp. The Midians, they were so confused, confused discombobulated. They were killing each other, which was enough for Gideon's army to finish off the Midian's army. God is a God of order, not a process. And the, the Gideon that we was introduced before was not the same Gideon after he 
overtaken the Midians. Gideon answered the call. Gideon had a conversation with the angel of the Lord. He was convinced on what to do. He was converted after seeing what he saw, committed to be able to take those 300 soldiers and to take care of those, those soldiers in a way that they were able to overcome the Midian army. And the same thing happened to us today, that God does the same thing for us when we answer the call. But if we don't answer the call, we can't even experience being convinced. We can't experience being converted. We can't even experience being committed truly because we have never answered the call. Have you been called? Only you can answer that question. God knows the answer. Gideon went from being defeated to doing the defeating. The children of Israel were no longer victims. They were victors. Gideon would not be who he was had he not answered the call to convince and to have an opportunity to be converted and to show commitment in the Lord with confidence. We all have been called. The Bible says it in Matthew 28 and verse 19, therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. You are special family. You are important. You are wonderful. You are God created. You are his workmanship. You are love. And God did not create junk. And he did not create you and I to fail. And it doesn't matter who you are and what you look like. It's the spirit that's in you and all that matters. And when that spirit is connected to God, we are unstoppable. Understand that. Things may happen to us physically, but it can't touch our spirit, can't touch our soul. And understand that it's not going to be easy. But remember, there is no growth in comfort, none whatsoever. We have to answer the call today, just like Gideon did. You have been called today. Now, you don't have to be on America's Got Talent, American Idol, or The Voice for someone to say that you're good enough. You don't need four yeses, and you surely don't need someone to turn their chair around to say that you are capable of getting the job done. You are part of the kingdom got talent. You are the kingdom's idol because we're following the one who died on the cross for our sins. And our voice came from the kingdom. And it's our job to represent the kingdom to the best of our ability, but we have to answer the call. And if you can answer the call for everyone else, whether it's your spouse, your children, your employer, why in the world can't you answer the call from Jesus? Today is the day to obey the word of God if you haven't already. Do like Gideon did, answer the call and allow God to pick your team so he can get the glory that he deserves. You heard the word today, Romans 10, 17, it's up to you to believe it, Mark 6, 6 16 and 16. Convert or repent. Acts 17, 30. Confess that Jesus is the Christ, Matthew 10, 32, and be baptized. Be committed for the remission of your sins. Today is the day to answer the call. If you have not been baptized, please let me know. There's water everywhere, and we can make arrangements for you to be baptized today. If you are a believer or a Christian and you Feel the need of prayer. Uh, you feel like you have sinned before the Lord. You want your brothers and sisters to pray for you. Please let us know and we'll do that. But the question is, have you been called? The answer is yes, you have. It's up to us to answer the call, just like Gideon did. I hope this lesson has helped you like it's helped me and it brings you closer to God that any time that he calls on you, that you'll answer it. May God bless you. May God keep you. Lord, thank you for giving us this opportunity to study your word. We pray, Father, that we all see the value and the benefit of answering the call. We do everything that we can to make you proud. And the times, again, that we let you down, we ask that you forgive us. Thank you so much for all things. In Jesus' name, we do pray. Amen. Thank you guys for joining this morning. And I hope that this lesson helped you like it did me. And then uh, we'll go out and do what we've been commanded to do, and we go out and make God proud. Uh, I encourage you to 
stay focused, stay in your lane so you can stay the course. And just know in order for us to be great, we must communicate because God has a purpose for you like he does for me, which means there's no need for us to compete. God has given us all enough air to breathe, family, which means there's enough blessings to receive. And if the answer to the why and the things that we do does not include God, then why are we doing it? Let's answer a call today. Remember this story. Gideon set the tone as well as other men in the Bible. He answered, other men answered. There's nothing stopping us from us answering the call. Let's answer the call today and let's start by sharing the word of God. And as we share, then we can live it. Thank you so much for joining me this morning. Have yourself a wonderful day.